All right, so for those of you that are here, if you do have two blocks, get those handy, um, a belt strap or and a tennis ball. And I usually set my props up by the head if I'm on the ground, but we're gonna start seated and just really be in a comfortable seat. So, and if you're tight in your psoas and your inner line, having the knees be able to drop below the hips is something to strive for in your positioning. And just kind of start by just wiggling around a little bit because we've already been seated for a while, right, in the lecture. Just get some movement. Check out how things are feeling. Even just kind of, you know, reach with your head a little bit, check out space. Not particularly doing anything. Just like, what does it take to just kind of undo some of that? And then find your center in the front of your spine, finding the tip of the coccyx, the tail of the sacrum, and begin to just kind of um, wiggle your way into center. Sometimes I find that I'm like, in front of myself or behind myself or to the side. If it helps you to close your eyes to find that awareness. And then inviting that all the way up through the spinal column front of the neck, all the way between the two hemispheres of the brain and the falcs cerebri, a beautiful piece of fascia, allowing the crown to kind of float all the way up to the ceiling. Allow your brain, your mind to start to focus on the breath, coming in through your nose, warming, up through the nose hairs, traveling down into your lungs. And exhaling through the nose. Taking a few breaths here just to orient, to breathing in and out through the nose. Bring your hands just on the outside of the ribs on the base. This is where the floating ribs come to the front. And come back into breathing and just notice how these ribs are moving. With the inhale, you should feel the ribs spreading a little bit wider and opening outwards. And on the exhale, that outwards will come in 
a little bit more. So we're just opening up the floating rib breath element. And bring the hands back and rest them on your quadriceps, on the thighs. Eyes could be closed. And just again, feel as you inhale that external rotation of the lower ribs. And as you come into a full exhale, allowing the ribs to hug back in towards a midline. We're gonna move into Veloma breath. The first part will be inhaling halfway and then pause and hold the breath for a moment. And then complete the inhalation, drawing the breath all the way up to your collarbones. And then exhale out long and smooth. And we'll continue that inhaling halfway. Pause and hold. And complete the inhalation all the way up to your collarbones. Exhale out long and smooth. Inhale. Halfway pause. Complete the inhale. Inhalation to the collarbones. And exhale out. Take a couple rounds without the cues. Then we'll switch the breath. We're going to inhale completely all the way up to the collarbones. And then exhale out halfway, pause and hold the breath. Then complete the exhalation all the way down, softening the ribs. Again, inhale all the way up from the pelvic floor all the way up to the collarbones. Exhale out halfway, and then complete the exhalation. And continue holding on the exhale. After you complete your next repetition, return to just full inhales and exhales and notice if there's been a micro change in your breath.
Again, you can straighten out your legs for a moment and just shake them out. Um, sometimes my legs fall asleep in these seated positions, so it's good just to wake them up, give them a little wiggle. You can point and flex the toes, get wiggly all the way through the spine. And then we're going to switch the cross of the leg. So we're doing the opposite cross. What you did just before and now go like that. Because often we go into a pattern that's easy for us when we sit cross-legged. We're going to take a seated twist. We're going to bring our right arm up and over or you can swing the arm to the side if you have a shoulder injury. You're gonna take your palm onto your sacrum. Pissing in. And then we'll take the other arm across the body. Stay neutral in your neck to start, isolating the twist mostly between the shoulders. You can have a little bit of twist in the lumbar, but don't force the twist in the low back. I'm going to leave it up to you today if you would like to be eyes open or closed. When our eyes are open, we're just engaging the fascial lines and planes in the body in a different way. Come back into your breath. As you inhale, Find a lifting up through the front of the spine. As you exhale, you can take a millimeter twist further to the right between the shoulders. And play with that within your breath. And inhale, lengthening up through the deep front of the spine. And exhale, gently twisting a millimeter more. Exhale, come on out. And again, shake it up, just be a little wiggly. Can you take a couple shoulder rolls in both directions? And then we'll find our twist to the left, bringing the left arm either up and over. And again, if you have a shoulder injury or if it's just kind of bugging you today, just take the shoulder low and swing the arm behind you. Palms gonna face forward, coming onto your low back. Stay in the center of the spine as you find the twist between the shoulders. Chin floats over the breastbone or the sternum. Finding that breath rising up through the front of the spine, finding length. And exhale, micro twisting to the left. You might start to tune into this undulation that happens from the spine with the breath. And then we'll slowly unwind out of that. And again, just take some wiggles. And we're gonna do some push ham work today. So bring your hands in front of you. And we're going to open the hands like a book with an inhale. 
And as we're inhaling, we're still gonna bring soft fists back towards our waistline. And then we're gonna exhale, we're gonna push out, setting a boundary in front of us. And we're gonna turn the hands towards each other with an inhale, like pulling saltwater taffy. Turn the palms towards the ceiling, soften your elbows like a balance, a classic Libra. Then bring that up, inhale. And exhale, bring that down into your heart. We're gonna do that a few more times. Drop the fingers straight forward, inhale, open the hands like a book. Draw the hands back, soft fist. Exhale, push out. Turn the hands towards each other. Inhale, broad and open. Feeling the energy, the prana, the chi between your hands. Turn the palms forward, soft elbows. Exhale out. Inhale, scoop up the chi. And exhale, bring that all the way down into your heart. Inhale, fingers forward, open the book. Draw that back, push out. Inhale, broaden open. It's like bringing your hands through water, but it's energy. Turning the hands up, exhale out. Inhale, scoop up the energy. Gather the prana. And bring that down into your heart with the next exhale. Three more times, inhale, fingers forward. Open the book, draw that back. Exhale, push out. Inhale, hands towards each other, broad and open. Exhale, palms to the sky, soft elbows. Inhale, draw that up. You can add your eyeballs in, look up. Exhale, look down, bring the hands down. Turn the fingers forward, gaze forward, inhale, open the hands like a book, drive back. Inhale, look long into the distance. Inhale, hands go together, broaden, feel your periphery, your side walls next to you and your eyeballs, turn the hands up. Inhale, scoop up the prana, look up to the sky. Exhale, draw that down into your heart. Inhale, fingers forward, open the book, draw that back. Inhale, look long in front of you, push the hands out. Hands towards each other, broad and open. Good, see your periphery with your eyeballs. Inhale, scoop up, look up to the sky. Lead with your eyeballs first, look down. Hands come forward. Do this one on your own without cueing. Look where you're going first, then let the body follow. And bringing the hands into the heart, stacked, close your eyes. Focusing on your breath and your heart. And straighten your legs and wiggle out your feet, your ankles, do a little bit of pointing and flexing or ankle circles, whatever feels good. Kind of reawaking everything from sitting on them. And we're gonna transition onto our backs into restorative nest, rest, which is a, a bent knee position.
And if you're in bent knees, you can just kind of slowly lower yourself down. You can use a blanket underneath your head for support. Just watch making it too high because you'll actually take your neck into a forward head posture. And let's just take a napasana, knees to chest for a moment. Hug out the low back. Yoke through the feet, which is dorsiflexion. And you can play with eyes open or closed today. Your next exhale, bring the left foot in bent knee position back to the mat. And we're just gonna take a hug out to the right towards the armpit with the right knee. Soften back into your breath. And then we're gonna hug the knee towards the center, towards the chest bone. And using your right hand on your shin, you can just relax the left hand somewhere that's comfortable for you. We're going to kind of pump our kidneys a little bit. So with an inhale, we're going to fill up the belly and drop the knee out to the right. And with an exhale, we're going to draw it back towards the navel, the belly button. And let your ankle kind of just swing back and forth with the breath. Once you feel like you have this motion synced up with the breath, I want you to imagine your heel or your ankle drawing a sideline figure eight. So you can see my foot is starting to draw as I'm rocking back and forth. It's an inhale dropping outwards and exhale the navel comes back towards the spine as you come into midline. If drawing the figure eight feels too complicated, just focus on the direct movement of just inhaling, dropping open, and exhale, bringing that back in, and just let your foot do what it needs to do. And then take a few rounds a little bit faster, faster than your breath, just kind of be a little wiggly, be playful with this. Doesn't have to look pretty. And then we're going to relax the right foot down to the mat. We're going to switch sides, hugging back with the left knee towards the armpit, yoking through the left foot. Exploring the fullness and the smoothness of your breath. Mm -hmm. 
and then switch the hug towards the chest bone, the sternum. Then leaving your left hand on the shin, you can just let your right hand hang out wherever it feels comfortable. We're going to explore inhaling, dropping the knee out to the left and exhaling, bringing that back in. And this is to help our kidneys have some more movement. They usually in health can move five centimeters up and down the front of the spine. So we're just facilitating that kidney pump. and inhale as you drop out so you have room to fill up your belly. And if you'd like to add the figure eight, drawing a figure eight with the ankle bone, feel free to do that. And you can even take that a little bit faster, faster than your breath. Just kind of be playful. It doesn't have to look pretty. It's just kind of getting movement through all the joints, ankle, knee, hip joint, and not having it, the foot stuck up in your kidney, which can happen. Relaxing that down, bringing the foot back to restorative rest. We'll take some reclining cat cows. So find your coccyx, tip of the tail of the sacrum, and then bamboo. And we're gonna reach forward with the tail. Just kind of warming up the spine. You can look up with your eyeballs and then exhale. Draw the tops of the hips down and back reaching, curling the tail, the coccyx up. Now uncurl your tail, let that be the leader of the movement, looking up with the eyeballs. And then curl the tail up and look down. And continue that movement, just explore that. And now we're just going to stretch out, pencil stretch, reach up through the heels, dorsiflex, reach up with the hands. And just wiggle from side to side, lifting out the low back through the heels, getting your heels out of the low back as you wiggle and jiggle. You think of yourself like an earthworm, just kind of wiggling back and forth. And this will set us up to move back to bent knee position, restorative rest. We're gonna grab our tennis balls, 
to do some myofascial release, um, neurovascular release work through um, from our lumbars and the hips, but we're gonna actually start up in the rhomboids. So the rhomboids are just between the spine and the inside of your shoulder blade. So you can slip the tennis ball right up there. And come back into your breath. And we're gonna use the leg, um, what's called, it's a lever technique. So we're gonna use the leg like a lever. So we're gonna just kind of rock the right knee out a little bit. Just kind of find where you feel the restriction up here where the, the tennis ball is. And you can have your other leg out straight or bent, it's up to you. And then take a breath in and breathe on out. And then we're gonna find another position where we feel slight restriction. We're gonna breathe in and breathe out. And again, we can move into abduction, dropping the knee open a little bit more and breathe in and breathe out. And then we're just gonna move the foot away from the hip a little bit and breathe in and breathe out. And then you can explore taking the foot further away from the hip bone, breathe in and breathe out. And then just reach all the way through the foot Come into dorsiflexion, yoking through the foot, internally rotate the ankle just a little bit, and then bring it back to bent knee position. And we're gonna pick that tennis ball out from underneath, and we'll do the opposite side first. We're gonna explore left rhomboids. So it's just in the inside of the shoulder blade, the medial border of the scapula, but not on the spine. And right at the top, you could just take a breath in and breathe on out. And you can explore abduction, or you can also just push, bring the heel away from the hip bone and breathe in and breathe out. And play with that as your lever. Just explore different positions, whatever kind of speaks intuitively to you. So today with my left leg, just straight out seems like a better invitation. And eventually just working to a straight leg, or if you're doing the abduction, um, you're going to work towards a straight leg, and then we can also internally rotate the leg a little bit, turn it inside, and then take it back up to a bent knee position. And then we'll take the tennis ball out from there. Yeah. Now, once you take the tennis ball out, just notice how your shoulders feel, if the shoulder blades are kind of dropping further down your back or more into the earth. Just take a moment to feel that. You can close your eyes. And then we're gonna to switch to treat the iliolumbar ligament. So the iliolumbar ligament is just at the top of the hips, right where the fifth lumbar is. And you have the sacrum and the top of the hips is. So you might wanna just palpate in here with your hands first. And it's kind of this dense 
piece hugged right next to the spine. And that's where we're gonna stick the tennis ball. If I can find it. Thanks, Bamboo. So hug that tennis ball to the right side. So you're not on the spine, but you're on the ligaments here. And with the neurovascular release, we're gonna do some similar breath work. So just take a breath, inhale and exhale. And we'll just explore bringing the right foot away from the base of the hips, creating just a little bit of length and breathe in and out again. And then again, sliding the foot a little further away. Breathe in and out. And then we'll work towards just reaching through the heel, dorsiflex through the foot. Take a nice breath in and out and gently immediately rotate the leg, turning the toes inward. And then we'll bring that back up. We're gonna take that tennis ball out. Take a moment just to feel your right hip. Hopefully it's kind of dropping backwards and into your mat a little bit more. And then we'll switch sides. So left iliolumbar ligament, taking the tennis ball, ball just into that little crook in the back. Take a breath in and out. Then we'll draw the left foot away. And you can either have your right leg bent or straight out, whatever feels okay for you. And taking the foot a little bit further away from the base of the pelvis. Breathe in and out. And continue exploring that. And just each placement, you're just taking one breath in and out. Eventually finding, reaching all the way through, dorsal flex through the foot, take a nice breath in and out. And then immediately rotating the foot. You can bend through the knee to safely take the tennis ball out from your low back. Come back to restorative rest. Take a moment to feel if the hip bones have um, more, let's say more equally, it's never like a perfect thing, but have kind of softened and dropped into the earth. And then we're gonna do one more point today. So take your hands and find where your leg bone comes up deep into the hip socket. And you can just kind of micro move you need back and forth to find that. And there's usually, there's a, about that long of a placement here where the hip bone is. The highest point is glute minimus. And then we have um, piriformis right below that. So we're gonna work piriformis. It balances your sacrum and space. So we're gonna take that tennis ball right into that edge of the piriformis and drop, open your knee. And we're just gonna do a pretty direct myofascial release right now. You should have a little bit of sensation in here, not so much that you can't breathe and come back into full breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose.
and then bring that knee back up and we'll just switch sides. So find that on the other side, you can just rock your knee in and out, kind of feeling the greater trochanter and you're finding that kind of higher insertion point of glute minimus and then you're just gonna drop right below that and that's gonna be your piriformis tendon. And we're gonna use a tennis ball to hook into that. And it has to go all the way through your glute maximus muscles, right? The big butt muscles. Find a sensation level that you can breathe into and then sink into the breath. And then we'll bring the knee up and we'll pull the tennis ball out and just set it to the side. Let's see how we can do the next piece with a cat on my belly. <laughs> Grab a block and you're gonna use, um, depending on the size of your pelvis. So if, if you are more petite, you're gonna go with the narrower, the narrowest or this width. Um, if you have a wider pelvis, you can take the wider side of the block. Okay. And I'm going to go wider today to engage deep in my adductors. So now we're just going to do a couple sets of knee squeezes. A nice big inhale, anchor through the feet, feel the, behind your toes and the metaphalange joints, the meta MP joints. Press behind the toes. And then exhale, squeeze the knees, 25% effort or you can give it a little bit more. And we're helping the sacrum drop out of the hip bones a little bit and kind of float. Lengthen through the back of your neck with a squeeze and relax that down. So inhale, anchor through the feet, exhale, squeeze the knees, 25% effort for two, three, four, and five. And relax that down. A nice big inhale, exhale, squeeze, both sides equally for two, three, four, and five, and relax that down. Now we're gonna do what I call the garlic press. We're gonna draw the right knee in only, so inhale, exhale, draw in the right knee. Now bring in the left, squeeze, soften your sits bones, the ischial tuberosities towards the heels, lengthening, from pubic bone to navel for two, three, four, and five, and relax that. Now we'll take in the other side. Inhale, draw in the left knee only. Now bring in the right, squeeze, lengthen pubic bone to navel, reach the sits bones towards the heel bones for two, three, four and five and relax that down. Now we're gonna squeeze the knees equally. Inhale, anchor the feet, exhale, squeeze without lifting up the pelvis. And release that. We can set the block to the side. And take a couple micro cat cows just checking out um, how, how your spine is feeling in the sacrum, and especially because the sacrum, a lot of the work we just did with the garlic press is realigning the pole through the pelvic diaphragm. You might prefer to do this with eyes closed. even inviting the sacrum to 
be more buoyant, like a buoy on the water. Have a sense of like a floaty sacrum. And you can even add an awareness of the lowest vertebra on top of the sacrum, L5. On the inhale, opening like a set of doors towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, it closes back towards the earth. And see if you can just kind of isolate that movement of opening and closing the vertebra with the breath. Soften back into a neutral. And so with that more neutral um, lumbar, so you're not too far forward in your hips and you're not too far back, we're just going to work that for a two-legged pose, dwipadipitam. You can have your fingertips reaching towards the heels. Eyes are closed. We're staying neutral in the neck, or you can look up. We'll see what happens with bamboo as I start to rise up. Inhale, anchor through the feet. We're engaging the whole back line of the body, shooting the knees forward, making a straight line between the knees and the shoulders, and then exhale, lower back down. And again, just kind of rise on up. and slowly come back down with your own breath. And we'll continue this exploration. We're engaging front line and back line, creating a nice long line from pubic bone all the way up to the chest bone or the sternum. And this is the same line that we need to have for a downward facing dog. Really working both parameters front and back, balance from the lateral line in the side. I'd like to add the arms in. Sinking it with the breath, inhale, reach out through the fingertips, drawing it up towards the ceiling. And exhale, lowering down, bringing the hands down. Two more repetitions, inhale, come on up. You can raise the hands. And exhale, lower back down. And one more time, inhale. Sink the movement in the breath. If you like to hold it at the top for an extra round of the breathing, inhale and exhale. And then exhale, come back down. Take the knees to the chest. And we're gonna do supported V Pretty Karani again. We're gonna take the block, slip it underneath in the lowest place. So we're not displacing the sacrum. You want the broad piece on the hip bones coming across to support the back. 
And you could do one legged, be pretty karate, or you could take both legs up. Close your eyes. Be pretty crying is really good for settling blood pressure and resetting um, the pineal gland for creating more melatonin. And we're going to slowly come on out of that. Come back to bed, knee, take the block out, and hug it out. And we'll just rock on up. And we're gonna set up to go into a downward facing dog with blocks. We'll just get, if you have, have two blocks, you're gonna set them on either side of the mat and have them ready. And we'll just take a balasasana first. So um, reclining child's pose. I'm going to reach out, stretching out our low back. And make your way up to all fours. I'm going to use the blocks for support to climb on up to a downward facing dog with the heels in the earth. If you don't have blocks, just take a downward dog and be playful with it. And you can move the blocks around till you feel confident in that support. We're going to soften our ears between the elbows. Slight micro bend through the knees. If you feel like you like more of a stretch, you can always lower the blocks down. Finding length from the pubic bone through the sternum. You can just walk the feet forward. We're going to swing our arms straight forward to come up to standing. An extended tendasana, reaching the fingertips towards the sky. And bring the arms down. And shake that out. So I'm going to change my camera a little bit for standing. All right, we're going to use the blocks again in the few minutes that we have left for intense stretch pose, which is. And so if you have your blocks right in front of your feet, it'll help you find this. We're going to step straight back, keeping the hips square to the front of the room with the left foot. 
And then we're gonna just reach straight forward all the way up with the hands, extended to Dasana variation. And we're gonna hinge through the hips, reaching long with the arms. And then you can come on to the blocks. And here we're gonna kind of try to find not rotating our hips from side to side. You can imagine that I can put a cup of chai on your sacrum and that you can keep it level or like a pot of stew is another good one. So just kind of work at playing, squaring the hips parallel to the earth. You can stay here, or if it feels comfortable for you, you're gonna fold into the midline between the blocks. So this is just like Jhana Sursasana A in a lot of ways. Stay with your breath. Soft in the knees. Then inhale, come back up. Squaring through the hips. Kind of into a half lift. And then we're going to reach the arms. Swing them forward so that momentum helps you come all the way up. And then you can just bring them down. I like to flex through my wrist a little bit to stretch the inside line of my arms. And then we'll shake that out. We'll do opposite side. Take the right leg straight back and we're squaring the hips straight forward to the front of the room. So find that first. We're not locking the legs back. It's a slight micro bend. So all your muscles have to really work to support you through the knee joints. And we're gonna reach the Arms straight forward with an inhale. Exhale. Let your eyes track where you need to go to come onto the blocks. And again, we're gonna play with the hips here. Try to do your best, feeling them in space and balancing them towards the earth. You can stay here or you can micro bend through the elbows, finding a forward fold. Inhale back up to the half lift. And then we're gonna swing the arms straight forward to help us come up to standing. Beautiful. And then flex the hands down and step it forward. And just shake that out a little bit. And then let's stack the hands right here, right below the belly in the Dantian. So it's kind of like a storage house of all our power. And take a moment to really embody the space that you're in. Feeling everything in front of you to the side and back of you. Bringing the top hand on top of your heart. And drawing the hands together to the third eye. We'll bow forward to close the practice in a namaste. Bringing hands into the heart, namaste.